When I started using VEAF from Isotope, I didn't fully understand how to activate and actually get it to work. So this is a guide to help people get used to using it right away with minimal fuss. First up is the portal. When you've made your purchase, you have two ways of activating the product. The easiest method is to activate it during the purchase process. It should be there by default once the product portal is installed and you've logged in. It will appear something like this, where you can see that it's activated. If it's uninstalled, there will be an install orange button here and you just click that to fully install it. The second method is to get the product key from the account overview on the website. Go over to the little person icon, select account overview, select my apps and plugins, and then down at the bottom in this section down here, click the barcode and the plus icon, input your serial code here. Once submitted and activated, you'll have the option to authenticate it for this device or with an iLock. I personally never chose to use iLock, so I'm not quite sure what that process is like. So for sake of argument, we're just going to authenticate for this device. Once that's installed and everything, it will appear here. Now the main question is, how do we go from this product here to using on your system? If you type in VEA here, you'll get an EXE that will try to reinstall the app. Typically, you expect an application to open up in Windows natively and run alongside the program. This would be as an EXE. The problem that you'll encounter is that VST does not act this way at all. It will constantly try to uninstall and reinstall itself, never actually running the program outside of another program. Instead, you have to open up your editing software of choice. For sake of argument, I'm going to use DaVinci Resolve. The footage in the background is just from a previous video. You then go to the Fairlight section, which is the little music icon. You have two different ways of adding VST effects to audio. You can either add them to individual clips or you can add it to the entire track. To add a VST to a clip, go to the top left to Effects, select that, go down to VST Effects, VEA, click and drag, and then you can choose which clip you'd like to apply it to. Alternatively, you can go to the right here and select the audio section. Select the one that you wish to have selected, in which case audio track one. Go over to the effect section. Make sure that you have the correct audio selected. So we have audio one selected here and then it gets hovered in gray. Select the plus icon under effects. Scroll down to restoration, VST, VEA. And then VEA will be added to the overall track. From here, VEA will open itself. And after playing some of your audio track, you can play with the sliders to your liking. For example, we will just take this section of audio here. It's important to note that you'll need a sufficiently long piece of audio for it to detect, analyze, and adjust audio adequately and appropriately. So we're just going to dial it back to about a middle part of the video and let it play for a little bit so that VEA can capture what it needs to to properly adjust the parameters. The ripples and complexity of water's surfaces this is more noticeable in the ocean than standing pools of water. Low has a few waves present, with high adding more. And so we can hear VEA kicking in there and applying the audio adequately. From here, you can play with the sliders to your liking. The clean knob acts as a noise filter, removing unwanted background noise. Shape acts as an EQ, adjusting the tone of the audio to sound more professional. Boost acts as a compressor, squishing the loud segments or springing up the quieter segments to make the audio more balanced overall. I'll now demonstrate each option with a piece of recorded audio from my phone to show the before and after. The first thing that we're going to play about is the clean, which should remove background noise. I think it's going to struggle because my voice and the background noise are kind of on equal level and it may not assess that as background noise. But we will see and we will start from here. We're going to increase the clean to... A little bit let's raise it by 20 percent this is just an audio test to see how effective it is at removing background noise this is the second test to check out how it removes background noise this is the third audio test to remove background noise so as you can hear there even 20 percent the very quiet sections were completely removed and this is ideal especially if you have fans and other background noise interrupting your recordings it won't be super effective if there is like yelling or barking or the very loud noises as you saw there at 20%. Um, let's just see if we crank up to 100% what happens. This is just an audio test to see how effective it is at removing background noise. This is the second test to check out how it removes background noise. This is the third audio test to remove background noise. So by the time we reach that third segment where the background music is of a low enough level, it's completely removed. The second segment sounded quieter to me at least, so I would feel as though it's doing its job adequately. 
Although obviously if there is something on par or louder than your voice, then it will be drowned out and it won't effectively remove it. The second knob that we will play with, just gonna reset this to zero, is the shape. Now the shape is supposed to act as an EQ and adjust the audio to give it an overall better quality. And we're just going to adjust the shape as we go along and we'll see how it changes things. This is just an audio test to see how effective it is at removing background noise. This is the second test to check out how it removes background noise. This is the third audio test to remove background noise. Now I didn't feel a substantial difference with that. I did notice on the end one that it was perhaps muffling the audio. This is the third audio test to remove background noise. This is the third audio test to remove background noise. Okay, so it's cutting off those high frequencies and it appears to be muffling by adding more bass. If you're doing more of a podcast or a speaking form type video, that may be more beneficial to you. If we go for the mid-tone and remove everything and then we'll do a side-by-side -side comparison. This is the second test to check out how it removes background noise. This is the second test to check out how it removes background noise. So again, more of the same. I think that it has a sliding scale between leaving things open and crisp. Let's getting those kind of podcasty deeper tones in there. And we're going to go back to the first one just to see what that's like. This is just an audio test to see how effective it is at removing background noise. This is just an audio test to see how effective it is at removing background noise. So there's definitely a tonal change. I would say not to put up to 100% because I don't really like that kind of muddy tone. I'd probably leave it somewhere in the ballpark of enough where you're getting that bass, but not enough that it's muffling everything. The last thing to test is boost. Boost is supposed to adjust the audio so that it's roughly the same level. So I think this might be worth doing on the last one because it's rather quiet. This is the third audio test to remove background noise. Especially because it trails off at the end there, so we'll boost 100%. This is the third audio test to remove background noise. So that's brought kind of everything up. Um, but there's definitely a lot more background noise. So I would say if you're gonna use boost and you're gonna boost everything stupidly high, you probably want to use that in tandem with clean to reduce it. Like we'll listen to that again. This is the third audio test to remove background noise. And then we'll come in with clean and we'll set that to 30%. This is the third audio test to remove background noise. This is the third audio test to remove background noise. And if we want a bit more bass. This is the third audio test to remove background noise. And so we've got a very even, okay sounding recording from something that originally sounded like this. This is the third audio test to remove background noise. So you can see there's a big difference with using it, and it's a very simple and intuitive way of just adjusting the sliders. I personally think that for a quick process, let's say you have the majority of the work done already, you already have something removing loud background noises, and adding something to add a little bit of boost to even out the levels would probably also be ideal unless you have a lot of dynamics going on. This has just been me running through and showing you a little bit of VEA and what you can do with it, what each slider does, and how to set up and get started with it. I hope this has been helpful. I'll catch you guys next time. Peace and take care, and I'll see you guys in the next one.